My mother wants to be cremated. She says it's better for the environment. She's misinformed. It's worse. She should look that up. It's actually misinformed. It's much worse. It's, it's much less costly. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and after she's deceased, what difference does it make anyway? What would you advise I tell her? And why is cremation forbidden in our religion? Brings me back to the one thing I would change how we view ourselves and how we view others and therefore how we view the world around us. Her mother obviously views herself as a body and she doesn't understand why she needs to be returned to her maker in a certain way. Uh, but the body and the soul come down together, they're twinned and conjoined to fulfill their mission together and uh, it's, it doesn't work by the conventional rules of till death does us part. And so the soul and the body need to be treated in exactly the way the maker, not suggested, but commanded. And cremation is absolutely against biblical law. Just to, to embellish on that, on that point, um, there is this notion of the Hebra Kadisha. These are the people who have to attend to the deceased upon their passing. And there are very great restrictions upon them about the way they have to conduct themselves when dealing with the what we call purification process. Now you ask yourself, but why? It's but merely a body. And the answer is, as per what Mrs. Robinson Slonim pointed out already, that the body was always animated with a soul. And therefore what was, is, and always remains holy. There was a story, a very tragic story told after 9-11 where a woman presented herself before a rabbi because there was some but mere ash that had flown up and onto her window. And she wasn't quite sure, how am I supposed to deal with this? Because it could very well be human remains contained within. She understood, she knew. And the rabbi told her, take paper towels, make them wet, clean the ash, and bring those for burial. So great is the sensitivity that we have to attribute to the human body. God entrusts it with us. God chooses at whatever point that he's going to take the soul back to his side. But that body and that soul always remain in, and maintain an intimate relationship going forward. Thank you. Rabbi Nu? Yeah, just to add that the uh, traditional view in Judaism of eternity, of the eternal life, is a physical existence, body and soul after the resurrection. And the reason for that is, as was mentioned, that the body being the uh, temple for the soul also has holiness and therefore it also will endure forever like Adam and Eve were meant to before the uh, sin of the uh, forbidden fruit. There is a, a widely known, uh, what do they call it, urban legend that if a Jew is tattooed, it cannot be buried in a Jewish cemetery. Uh, that was widely uh, propagated, it seems, at some point to uh, discourage Jews from that biblical prohibition. But in fact, a Jew can be buried with a tattoo. That is, however, not so simply the case with somebody who's been cremated and wants to bury the urn, for instance, in a Jewish cemetery or in a mausoleum. And uh, it is also complex to discuss the issues concerning uh, the rights and the privileges and the honors given to such a person after death. And that's something for a Jew to consider. And that's the ultimate statement of our tradition against cremation, I think. The second thing I want to bring to your attention uh, is that since we mentioned the Hevra Kadisha, uh, the, the holy society that prepares uh, the Jewish body for its final repose, I think I want to take a moment to just explain something here because it's kind of a subject that nobody speaks of. Uh, but going in line with what Rabbi Shech had just talked about, I want you to know uh, some details that I think can, can amplify the, the sense of sanctity. When the Hevra Kadisha care of the body, and there's essentially three things the Hebra Kadisha does. It cleanses the body, it purifies the body in a particular fashion if there's no mikveh in which the body can be immersed, and then the body is dressed in a particular fashion that is accompanied with verses that are recited. And I want you to know that okay, as this is done, as is it done, as this is sentence. done, there is such a feeling of sanctity and respect that accompanies this process, so much so that if members of the Hever Kadisha need something from the other side of the room or from a member of the team that's on the other side, it's not passed over the deceased. And finally, after this process is completed and before the casket is covered, the head of the Hever Kadisha 
asks forgiveness from the deceased using their full name, asking them for forgiveness if anything in the process in any way slighted their dignity. And I think we okay. all here need to know this because you need to know what a Jew is giving up among so much else when we decide, God forbid, to go the route of cremation.